In this video, I'm gonna show you my top 10 carnivore diet staples, and at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you my foolproof, easy meatball recipe that you guys have been asking for, so stay tuned. Welcome back my friends, my name is Sarah. I am known as Carnivore Yogi. Thank you so much for being here, clicking on today's video. Please hit that like button and subscribe while you're here. Today I'm gonna to show you my top 10 carnivore diet staples. This is all to do with food. I'm happy to make a separate video to show you some of my kitchen utensils and cooking utensils, things like that, that I have used over the last two and a half years. But today is just gonna be all about food. Some of these things I have discount codes for you so you'll check the information section below. Some of them I don't, but these are just things that I use pretty much every day or every week, at least a couple times a week. So I thought I would go ahead and share with you guys. So I do hope you enjoy this list. The first item on my list that is a staple is pasture raised eggs. Now I get these from a local farm. They get delivered to my house. I get about four dozen a week from a place called Carlton Farms, and that's here in Atlanta. I'll put their website below, but if you're not in Atlanta, which most of my viewers aren't, you can go to the website, and this is USA and Canada, www.eatwild.com, and find a local farm. I always encourage people to do that, but pasture-raised eggs, I can absolutely tell a difference in taste and I do think the quality is better so this is like number one on my list if I run out of these I'm really lucky because my local Whole Foods market actually carries white oak pastures eggs which is another pasture raised egg that you can get and you can order the white oak pastures pasture raised eggs online actually they have a special way of shipping them to you so I will link them below as well and they're gonna probably come up on this list again but they're not always there, so I do try to stock up from the local farm. Pasture raised eggs, number one on my list. Number two on my list, and some people get grossed out by this stuff, but I love it, is Salmon Row. Now, this particular brand, again, is carried at my Whole Foods. It's called Caviar Rust Roos. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly. Um, but I eat about a tablespoon of Salmon Row almost every day, or at least five days a week to get my DHA up to get those healthy omega-3s up and it does help to reduce inflammation and help with your brain health. Another cool thing about Salmon Row is that it has a compound in it that actually allows you to go in the sun and not sunburn as much. Now this is maybe a little controversial but I have eliminated all seed oils out of my diet years ago and boosting those omega-3s and eliminating the seed oils I don't get sunburned anymore. So comment below if you have had the same experience eliminating the seed oils and maybe boosting up your omegas. I don't get sunburned. Another source for salmon roe if you don't have it at your local Whole Foods, my friend Dr. Rimka actually just started selling salmon roe. So I'm gonna link her Instagram profile in the information section for you guys so you can go check it out and get some salmon roe from her. Why not just talk about eggs for the whole video? I am gonna move on from eggs, but duck eggs are another staple in my diet. They are absolutely delicious, and I can't get these every single time I make a farm order. They're a little bit erratic, so when I get them, I'm super happy. The egg yolk is huge, and it's just full of healthy fats. The white on the duck egg is like a little fluffy. It has a different kind of a texture, but it's nice because we do eat a lot of eggs to mix it up a little bit, and some people find that if they can't tolerate chicken eggs, that they can tolerate duck eggs. So if you have an issue with the chicken eggs, maybe try to get a hold of some duck eggs. Again, you can use that website, www.eatwild.com. It's a wonderful resource if you are looking to connect with a local farmer. Number four on my list is gonna be pluck organ meat seasoning. I love this stuff, I use it to cook on for my family, I put it on their chicken, I put it on my eggs. I didn't do seasonings for the first two years of carnivore and Pluck actually reached out to me probably like December of 2020, asked if they could send me some and I was like, sure, why not? And I'm absolutely hooked. So this one has onion, pink Himalayan salt, garlic, 
bovine organ meat blend, liver, kidney, spleen, heart, pancreas, smoked paprika, lemon peel, black pepper, mustard seed, parsley, green onion, and thyme. Okay, so if you're following a carnivore diet and you have autoimmune issues, go ahead and check their website out. They're gonna be coming out with an autoimmune blend for you guys because some of the things in there may not agree with you if you have autoimmune issues. So I do wanna put that little caveat in there, but again, I didn't do seasonings for two years, added these onto my eggs, absolutely love them. They also go great on chicken, they go great on steak, they go great on seafood. I mean, it's like literally my go-to seasoning for everything. It's so delicious. So I will link them below as well. Speaking of organ meat, I also really love carnivore crisps to get my organ meat. Now I mentioned this in a previous video. I did a week of carnivore diet meals and I like carnivore crisps. You can use my code Yogi for a discount purely for the organ meat. So I like their beef liver. I like their heart. I like their crunchier kind of um, like chip type of uh, meat snacks. I'm trying to think of the right word to say. So I like the elk. I like their chicken. Um, they're really nice and crispy. I make nachos out of them sometimes, but the carnivore crisps are a staple for me to again, get those organ meats in for liver and for heart. That's what I mainly use them for. And then if I just want that potato chip kind of like a crunch, I don't really eat a lot of pork rinds. Um, they tend to make me bloated and then I overeat them and I just really don't do pork rinds. So if you're looking for like a really crunchy, crispy snack, crispy is the key word. Uh, I like the carnivore crisps. Another staple is carnivore snacks. Now, these are not like a crunchy chip. These are more like melt in your mouth meat. I don't know if you would call them wafers, but these are ridiculous. Now, I know that carnivore crisps make similar like ribeye and pork. I gotta tell you guys, I like the crisps for the organ meats and the, the chip kind of a, a texture on a couple of them, but if you want a really delicious like melt in your mouth meat snack, these are amazing. So these are the beef sliders. I actually, <laughs> I'll flash a picture of the ribeye and of the pork loin. Those two are, the pork loin's probably my ultimate favorite and a lot of my clients, a lot of other people out there, the pork loin is like number one. I can't keep them in the house because if I get them, I have to hide them. My daughter eats them. The pork loin is absolutely ridiculous. It's so good for breakfast. I make a meal out of these uh, often, you know, when I get them. <laughs> they don't last long here. So all we have left is the beef sliders and I'm kind of hiding them because these are really good um, kind of for dipping. Like I like to just dip them in ghee and that like a nice smooth creamy ghee or compound butter. Oh my gosh. it's literally the best. So I also have a code for these. It is Yogi. So I know I have two <laughs> meat snacks here. Again, they're for different purposes. This is more like something hearty. I can make a meal out of it, like a lunch or a dinner and have it with some butter. And it's just so heavenly. Um, the crisps are more to get my organ meat and to get that like chip kind of a sensation in my mouth. So I hope that makes sense. Number seven, and it's kind of sad because I only have one pack left and it's opened. Uh, Nature's Rancher bacon is so delicious. It's sugar-free, it is just the best bacon, and we have bacon a lot here at the house. Sometimes we just do bacon as a meal every now and then. Um, but it's so good and it's sugar-free. This is a really, really great brand. It doesn't have a lot of the additives. I get this at my local Whole Foods. They have a website, you can go search them out. But this is absolutely a staple in my house for me and the family. Number eight is gonna be lamb. So I know a lot of people, beef, 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 I, beef, yes, absolutely. But I, I love lamb and it's absolutely a staple. You'll see in my meat, meatball recipe that I actually mix lamb and goat. Typically my meatballs are a mixture of lamb and beef, lamb, goat. I like to mix things, I even put bison in there. But lamb is absolutely a staple for me. This lamb comes from white oak pastures. They really do care for their animals. And it's, it shows in the food, it's just absolutely delicious. So I will again link white oak pastures. If you're looking for a good lamb source, link them. But lamb is just up there on my list for sure of staples. Number nine, fat. Of course, you guys knew I had to do a whole section about fat. These are uh, marrow bones. They're canoe cut marrow bones, again from white oak pastures. 
bake them in the oven, absolutely so delicious, but I do make sure that I get a lot of fat in my diet and sometimes I'll just cook up a burger and a marrow bone and have that. You can dip your burger into that marrow bone and it is so delicious, it's just nice and satisfying and so good for you. This is a bag of fat also from White Oak Pasture, just beef fat that I separate it out. This is what I do, I cube it, I keep it in the freezer and it's like little snacks. So if I'm hungry, it's in between meals, I can go and just grab a little chunk of fat, gets me right through to the next meal or if it's like before bed and I'm starving and I'm like, I know I'm not gonna be able to sleep if I don't have a little something. That doesn't happen often, maybe, you know, every now and then, I will grab a little chunk of fat eat it, good to go. I also do put those in the air fryer sometimes if you don't like it cold and raw. Air fryer is a really, really awesome way to cook those as well. Number 10 on my list is going to be ghee. This ghee is organic, grass-fed, pasture-raised. It's so nice and creamy. Get this from my local Whole Foods, but I'll try to link in the information section below for you guys. Another brand that I have bought on Amazon before, but I love this brand. I do use butter on my food as well, but there's just something about ghee that's just amazing for dipping. If I'm dipping those crisps or the snacks, any kind of a meat snack, just dip it in there. You can probably see <laughs> that I have been dipping this one in there, um, but I absolutely love ghee, and that is number 10 on my list. And now let's jump into my meatball recipe. All right guys, so for this meatball recipe, I use one pound of lamb and one pound of goat, some pasture-raised eggs, I use just the yolks, the Redmond's Real Salt garlic salt, you can just use regular, and pork panko, and some grass-fed butter. I put four tablespoons of pork panko onto the two pounds of meat, you can use any meat that you want, two egg yolks, and I use those from the pasture-raised eggs. I also use just about six shakes or so. You can use more or less of that Redmond's Real Salt garlic salt. Again, you don't have to use that. You can just use regular salt. I use a cheese grater with some cold butter, and I just grate butter on top of that mixture. That is my secret ingredient, guys, and I use this for meatloaf also. This is my same exact recipe as meatloaf. You mix it all together, very easy, just do it with your hands, form into meatballs. You can make them as big or small as you like. Pop it into the air fryer. I will link my air fryer in the description below this video. I put it in for about 10 minutes, nine or 10 minutes on 390 degrees, just on regular air fry. Very simple, very easy. Again, I'll link my air fryer in the description below for you guys. And then pull them out and they're ready. Amazing meatballs, that shredded butter really does make all the difference. The pork panko, the garlic salt, they are delicious meatballs. Again, Guys, I hope that you enjoyed that list of staples. I would love to know what your staples are. Please leave them in the comments below. I love to learn from other people, get new ideas. And I hope that you're gonna make those meatballs. Tag me on your Instagram post, wherever you make them. Make sure you tag me at Carnivore Yogi on Instagram. I want to see them. I want to hear how you like them. That little secret ingredient there is everything. I promise you to bring all the moisture and all the flavor in. So thank you guys for tuning in and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.